dogs. <laughs> Cats. Are they the only animals? Oh, no. Maybe. The other animals aren't in this room. <laughs> I didn't I didn't see the other animal this morning in my bed, so <laughs> Hi, welcome to I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. I, we, we, every time we do the intro, I always go on about, um, like, it's always something in the room. I have a cat, so I saw a cat today, and Forrest has brought his dog, so that would have to be the only animals. That, that, uh, <laughs> we already did an episode on the animals, and we're like, no, no other animals. No other animals. How is everyone going? Good. Great. Good. Okay. I, I have a little announcement to make. I, I was I was chatting to my management yesterday, and, I, and I've been talking about this for many years now, and Forrest hears me talk about this on the regular, but I'm going to be – and, and my management wanted me to make a bigger statement and uh, and actually release something, but I think I'll just tell the listeners here now. Um, the next tour that I put on, on sale for my stand-up will be my last. I'm going to do two more years of stand-up comedy and I've, I'm contracted to uh, do a special with Netflix and then I'm not doing stand-up comedy anymore. I'll still do some acting if people will have me. I'll do some TV presenting and I love stand-up comedy very much And that's uh, but I, I, it's time for me. I, I realised in COVID how much I enjoy being at home. Yeah. <laughs> and, You're like, wait, this is so much better. And uh, but if if you if you live in uh, Canada, America, Australia, or Britain, I will be visiting each one of those countries and doing all the major cities once, and that'll be the last time I do any of those cities. So, yeah. you, so, should, um, you shouldn't have said where you're going because it's already going to be like, what about Greece? <laughs> Come back. Uh, I thought you were coming back to Cleveland. Well, there's things. There's things like like I would like to do like uh, there was a guy who was offering us some gigs in Italy, and I'll probably do something like that. And, uh, it, and it may take a little. It'll be two years from when I start doing stand up again. So it may be a year before that starts up again. So but but I, I just, you know, I I um I I would like to be at home uh, with my family and uh they're just uh you know I'd like to have another child and uh I, I miss so much of my first ch child's uh childhood just being on the road and all that type of stuff. And I really like being at home and I also I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot on stage and I w it will be nine stand-up specials, and if you can't get anything, you know, like, yeah. like, like nine stand-up specials, that's all the stuff, man. You know what I mean? Like, what else do you want me to say? So, How much material you're burning on this every week? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still do this podcast. Yeah. This will still be, be going on, and I'll act, and I'll, I'll act. I wouldn't mind working in a writer's room on a sitcom or something like that. Something well, a bit and you're more so good at selling TV shows too. It's like, how do you, like, how do you have the energy to even go out and do stand? Up uh, when you're trying to, I'll just keep selling more. Yeah, and you know what? When I was doing stand up regularly on the road, which has been the last twenty years, um, I have passed up a lot of acting work because the stand up's so lucrative and all that type mm -hmm. of stuff. And uh, uh, so I just wanted to say that to listen to that. And obviously, when the when we might, you know, I don't know what I'm going to call the last tour. It may be called Farewell Cunts. Or something <laughs> like that. Good night, Australia. Yeah, see you, cunts. <laughs> That's what it's probably going to be. How about the Burning Bridges store? You can just <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, I just, you know, uh, I don't think people can understand the toll it takes being on the road. And then you compound that over like 20 plus years. It's, it's hard. Even at the level you're at when you're doing your theaters and you're traveling and you're staying in nice places, it's still just brutal on your brain well, you and your body. You put out an insane and, amount yeah, of like, specials too in yeah. such a short period of time. Yeah. Well, it's just 20 years. I sort of, I sort of thought that it was enough. And then like COVID really hit it home for me. I was just sitting around the house going, this is good, man. And now that the world's opening up, I, I, I don't want it to open up. I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, responsibilities coming back <laughs> and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, can you imagine going to work nine to five every day now? Uh, I, I couldn't imagine it then. <laughs> what are you talking about? I haven't done nine. Well, like, imagine going back to the TV a, show. I haven't had a nine to five job since I was 19. But like oh. the TV show, we were there pretty much every day, all day. Like it, it would just be a big adjustment to go back to work full time is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, a nightmare. I, I think I enjoyed initially getting up and like having a purpose and all that type of stuff. A but purpose every, would be everyone, everyone always says to me, like, even, even if I don't get any more TV work or any acting or anything like that. And also, let's be honest, I reserve the right to take stand up up again. Yeah. I definitely won't do it for a few years. But if I decide to do it again, I can do it again if I, I want. I imagine you might do it around town once in a while, improv at a comedy store, pop in if, you, if, the, if the bug gets you. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I went on stage recently and I, I've been having to drink before I go on stage and it's sort of, I, I uh, get very nervous going on I, I feel like I've lost a little bit so 
Um, but going to play in front of my fans and everything and with a full set and everything like that, I'm very confident about. And I, I really believe I have one really good special left in me. I've, I've given up on ever winning an award or a, 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 a Grammy or anything like that. I don't worry about things like that anymore. Well, you know, if you make it that's something, uh, something special, you know, maybe, maybe it's a four hour set. Well, this yeah. is, this is what Ted I, talk. This, is, this is what I planned for the last two. I plan to give you an hour of new material and then doing an hour and a half and doing two routines that, um, some classics, some classics. Yeah. Mm. Greatest hits. Um, well, let's be honest. It'll be, it'll be maybe the muscular dystrophy story. And gun control. Now you know you could do. They have those those little things at the theater wherever you perform. When people walk in, there's a little card, and they get to fill out which routines they want to hear, and then someone backstage. Get <laughs> It'd be like a jukebox. <laughs> I've I've done that where where it's like we did that like in Australia where you could tweet me questions and stuff like that on the. Oh screen. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'd answer them afterwards. That was good, actually. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. In the auditorium, people would tweet you and all that type of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, we yeah. we had to start policing it because people were just fucking sending dick pics and yeah, shit. It got, it got a bit. <laughs> Um, what was the other thing I was going to say about that? Oh, well, that's all I got to say about that. I'll make a bigger announcement when the tickets goes on sales and I'll do some interviews and stuff then. And until then, I know my management asked me not to say anything, but I just thought I'd get it out of the way, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> well I, we do want to announce our new merch line of bucket hats, though. Yeah, bucket hats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Why I, I, was going, I was going to do the shoulders. I, I was cutting a t-shirt shoulders. out, but I was, I was late today. <laughs> I was going to show up in a bucket hat and some cold shoulders <laughs> and I was going to leave a jacket on and then I was going to go, that's a bit cold here, cold shoulders. And then I, I, I just didn't get around I it. was shoulder silhouette. Uh, it's, cold sh it's a cold shoulder silhouette. I, I, was oh. watching, I was watching Kath and Kim and Kath had a pair of mango espadrilles on and I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and also like Forrest even asked, where do you put espadrilles? There's an S on the end. Of course it wasn't a hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shoe. It's a multiple. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jack, why are you sitting at the table? I have some life hackets for us today. Oh, oh, wow. Good, good, good Fan life, favorites. life hackets. Theme song. <laughs> oh, there's a theme Jack, 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 Commentary from yeah, the that, that guy's not touring anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Smitty, for sending that in. What? Sometimes they're genius. What is he listening to? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they're not good. Sometimes they are good. What was the genius one? Was it uh, when he pulled one sleeve over <laughs> and tore his armpit? <laughs> nope, this shirt's got no hole. We're good here. Right. Um, first one. Hey, you got some dish soap <laughs> and you're kind of running low? Add some water and space it out, and then you can get the last life of your soap out of there. What, so you're saying water down things? Yeah, yeah, wa yeah uh, water what? down. Life hack. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little confidence. Does, does that work with other things? Like if All you, soaps, shampoo, body soap. Yeah, cordial soap. it works with. <laughs> any, oh, any? You know what it works really good with? Water. Ooh. Yeah, 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 you need to get a little bit more water, put some more water, water in there. Yeah. Get a water. I'm, I'm going back water. to the other hat. I can't hear with the bucket hat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear. The uh, headphones are over the top. It's I probably can't. better you don't for like yeah, that. I, I, I didn't know what was going on with the soap. So <laughs> so you add more soap to things? Was that what no, you said? No, add more water to oh. your soap. There is a life hack for ladies with mascara. Once it starts to get dry, you can put um, eye drops in there and lubricate it a little bit more, and it makes your mascara last longer. Add water life to everything. Hack it. It's not water. I said eye drops. <laughs> Did you hear that Just gulp? gulp? Yeah. <laughs> Next, we got a ketchup yeah. pack. Yeah. <laughs> if you got some pesky cum under your tongue, <laughs> water. <laughs> How long has that been there? <laughs> um, ketchup pack. Hey, you want ketchup that lasts a little longer but has a nice tang to it? Add, add some water. Fanta. Mm. You, you got that from Luis. It. I got that from Luis. Luis, back me up here. I've never had it. <laughs> he handed me this mic right before I said, I got one. I'm going to need your help. <laughs> yeah. no, I was like, I was wondering why you had a mic set yeah. up already. You, you just scoop it up out of the bottom of the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> they do do it in Mexico. That's why, that's why he told me about you it. Add, Mexicans add fans to ketchup? 
Yeah, I think they kind of do it for that same uh, soapy reason to make it last longer. Because at restaurants, they got the squeeze bottle. They add Fanta. Uh, so at restaurants? Like, yeah. Like that. Oh. That's like is, and they put it on pizza is, and stuff. Is ketchup it's, that much more expensive <laughs> than Fanta? <laughs> well, first of all, Isn't it's minimal. It's got soup over there. Mm. Not, cat not soup. Cat soup. Cat, cat soup. soup. Yeah. Cat soup. Mm. yeah, no, it's like they, they add the you Fanta mean to gato it. Gato soup. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? And they put it on pizza. Oh, it's great. It gives it the right, the right level of thing. Yeah, yeah, you put a bit of, you put a bit of <laughs> Fanta <laughs> and a bit of tomato sauce. Some flavor aid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have it with a bit of flavor aid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, my God. Sit, sit around the Christmas tree that's still green in March. <laughs> I like your new method here. You're like, hey, guys. Have you ever had ketchup and it's running out? This is like a new uh Yeah, the present format. presentation yeah. is good. Recipes aren't life facts. <laughs> you know uh, what you should do with peanut butter? Put it on toast. That's Ooh. a great hack. Mm -hmm. We'll do that one next week. Some jelly. Um, so I found these two online that I thought were um, fitting. These are online hackets. These are online life hackets. Yeah. Life hack these are life hacket approved life hacks. Trouble with chopsticks? This is how it's phrased. <laughs> Trouble with chopsticks? Mm. It's perfectly acceptable to eat your sushi with your hands. That's the way it was originally done in Japan. Yeah, I eat sushi with my hands. Yeah. But like, is that like, a life hack? It like, says it, it's a life hack on this website. I, it, it feels like we're getting sloppy <laughs> with well, the life see, hacks. It says 1000lifehacks.com, but this is life hack 1162, so they're running out. It's not even in the list. Yeah. It works with all food. <laughs> you don't want to use a utensil? Uh -oh. Use your hands. All your cutlery is dirty? Use you got your hands. hands. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they used to do it as cavemen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get rid of that pesky silverware. Yeah, but I like how you started off with trouble with chopsticks. That's how it's phrased. That's how it's phrased. Um, this one really made me laugh because it, it, it's going to work for These are meant to be character. your life hackers. You found a list that someone else yeah, did. Yeah, what about yours? And then you, you, could, run out? And no, then you uh, couldn't even pick good ones. <laughs> no, these are good. This, <laughs> this one is, hey, don't be on your best behavior on a first date. Do be your normal, everyday, relaxed, hanging with friends behavior. You want to be the person to like you for who you are, who you actually are, not who you are pretending to be. You will save yourself a lot of wasted time dating people who only like the fake you. Wait, is this How a, is this, this a, a life hack? I don't know. <laughs> is, this, is this a text your mom sent you? <laughs> it feels like <laughs> advice it, I was given. It, it's bad advice. You it's should pretend advice. to be somebody else. Yeah, you're going to be someone else. You don't want to be your real self. <laughs> On right a away. first no. date, you always pretend to be a richer, hotter, funnier version of yourself. That's how it works. How do you be a hotter version? It's Dark restaurant. Bucket hat. Bucket hat. <laughs> Cold shoulder silhouette. You don't have any of your own hacks. I did the two. Mm. Well, one we of have them was some, So you had one. We have uh, some <laughs> listener. We have some listener okay, hacks. Okay, okay. We'll get to some listener ones. Huh? Listen, listen this is from David Lesser. He goes, all right, I think you guys will like this one. Mm. If you're having a hard time with a poop, pick your feet up and grab your knees and gently rock back and forth on the toilet. If that doesn't help, another method is to, again, pick your feet up off the floor and run in place on the toilet. Love the show, and hopefully this will be received um, well. Pick your feet up off the floor and run in place. So you mean like get them up and then move your legs? I mean, it's basically getting yourself in a squatting position, which is what the squatty potty is for. Yeah, the for. squatty potty fixes yeah. that. But mm. rock yourself back and forth. I feel like if you do too much movement on the toilet, you could fucking rip the toilet seat Yeah, the seat will get messed up, especially if you have a, a nice Toto toilet. Yeah, definitely don't <laughs> no run in place on seats. that. Yeah. How's that working out, that toilet? Oh, it's Fantastic. But the yeah. Toto, if you're having a tr a hard, trouble shitting, it just reaches up into your ass and pulls it, it out, right? It has a little scoop. That yeah, comes yeah. Out. <laughs> it's That's what man. you pay the big bucks for. It's got a small person that lives in there. It just coaxes the poop out. All right, our, our last life hack of the day comes in from Tim from New York City. Wow. Uh, New York. City. <laughs> the big yeah. apple. And if you can make a life hack there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So he goes, after being an idiot stoner my whole adulthood, I recently discovered that you don't have to burn your tongue slash mouth to see if a cup of coffee or bowl of soup is hot. Your fingers can sense the heat instead. If the container feels hot to the touch, it's too hot to drink. Your fingers will sense just hot enough to not burn them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. The, his yeah. life hack was touch it with another part of your body. <laughs> <laughs> you can still burn your fingers as yeah, well. Exactly. You know. but at least it's not your tongue. I've never, I've never, <laughs> if someone could explain to me why, like, so, so with like baby baths, right? When you test the water, you meant to test it with your elbow. 
Oh, really? Oh, he just swished me hand in there a bit and went, oh, yeah, that's all right. Ready uh, for the, well, you just pour some in your eye. See if that works. There's yeah. something I don't know about. Because you know how you can pinch the skin of your elbow? Yeah. It never hurts. Yeah. Yeah. It never oh, hurts. Oh, so. But, I like, who's having these baths where the skin just falls off of you? You just tap it with your. I can tap boiling water like, oh, it's a bit. bit, bit no, nah, it, it's, it's, it's more controlled now. I think back in the day, like. Um, uh, people, they're like older people and younger people actually did get burned so badly in like baths that they like were hospitalized or died. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, think, yeah, I feel like the water doesn't even get that hot. Your yeah. hot water system taps out at like whatever degrees. Yeah, like yeah I think I think they're more it's, 130 it's, or something. It's way more regulated now, like for safety. Re- like it's not going to get mm. to that temperature, I guess. I don't know. Like, you remember in Rain Man? That was a thing. Yeah, that's why he was baby. autistic. He burnt babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get it. Yeah, so that t- and t- vaccines. Touch it with your finger. Wow. Yep, that was it. Mm. Touch soup with I your hope. finger. I guess, I guess maybe <laughs> yep. our listeners don't know what life hacks are either. Yeah, I don't think anyone does. The internet doesn't. I don't. I don't <laughs> think life hacks are a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But we'll, well keep trying every yeah, few let's weeks. Just, let's just keep you know the other life hacks that I really dislike that are on the internet that aren't life hacks are those ones where they go, here's a recipe. So you get the noodles of the pasta and you pump them full of things and then you leave them upright and then you get the ham and then you put a steak in a toaster, yeah. you know, <laughs> oh, those yeah, ones. Yeah. And then you cook the steak in the toaster for 10 minutes and it comes out. Per- and you're like, just cook your fucking steak on the grill like everyone else, you <laughs> numb-nutted cunt. <laughs> yeah. What are you fucking putting things in toasters and stuff? I saw a good one recently. It was about cutting onions. If you have a wet paper towel on the cutting board, you won't cry. Does never work. The onion ones never work. No, I, when I, I used to, when, when I, I used tried to, it. I know it'll work once because you're in, in your book, and then it won't work again. How did, what do you mean it wouldn't work? I don't again? know. When I worked in a restaurant, there was always a thing like you put water in your mouth, you breathe through your nose. You you yeah, because there's something right like right the, 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 whatever acid or something the needs to find a moisture. The onions figure it out. Oh, the, They're smart. They're yeah, sentient. They, they, yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> you just get your wife to do it. Life oh, hack. yeah, life hack. That is good. That's good. Okay, that's life hack of the day. No, it's not a life hack it because, you know. You yeah, have a if, wife. If, your, if your house didn't come is, out of my mouth, <laughs> if your house is dirty, get your wife to clean it. Life hack. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hungry, ask for your meal from your wife. Life hack. These are life hacks from the 1950s. Yeah, 1950 life hacks. All right, let's uh, let's <laughs> let's read some read adverts. Some ads. This company doesn't need any life hacks. This company is fabulous. It's Fabletics for men. Fabletics for men represents for every guy who wants to look and feel. His best without breaking the bank. God, I'm always breaking the bank. Don't break it. Yeah. Piggy bank? No, my bank's made out of Lego. Mm. <laughs> they keep it simple. Cut the crap. Focus on the cuts uh, to do things better than anyone else. Well, that means Lululemon quality at half the price. Is it called Lululemon? Yeah. yeah Lululemon you got it right. yeah. at half the price. Girls like the Lululemon, but you, you get it for half the price with the Fab Legs. Because you know, guys deserve nothing less than the best gear on the market. Now, I got me Fabletics over the yeah. sweatpants I was wearing the other day. I got some best, right here. Best flugel binders right. on the motherfucking planet is on your Fabletics. That was a flugel binder. Is that yeah. a sweatpants? Oh, no, all their things, their hoodies. What's have, a flugel binder? We talked about this yeah. last time. The flugel binder is the thing at the end of the shoelaces that oh, stops yeah. it from fraying. It was oh, that's the, right, that's right, that's and right. And was in the movie Cocktail. Mm. They give you a lovely, rubbery, tactile flugel binder. Fantastic. <laughs> Go to fabletics.com slash IDK for access to an insane deal. Get your first two pair of shorts for just $24 when you become a Fabletics Men VIP member at checkout. All styles, all colors, no exclusions. It's an insane deal because they know that once you try their gear, you'll be hooked. I'm hooked on Fabletics. Dun, 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 dun. To get the best active wear at the best prices, at least and get at least 20 to 50% off retail prices every time you shop, to get free shipping with all orders over $49 and free returns and exchanges within 45 days, like if you don't know you like it within 45 days, for access to even more savings with member credits each month, VIP members can choose to be billed forty nine ninety five for a member credit. 
You get they pay the forty nine ninety five, and then everything's cheaper, twenty to fifty percent off. You get the free delivery. You get the things. You get the big exchange. Members can then use their credit towards any item or kit to eighty bucks. So yeah. you buy the membership, then yeah, you're already spending it. Yeah, you're they just in. made that change recently too. Now the member credits actually get you more expensive stuff. Mm, which helps for fantastic. me. Fantastic. Yes, you heard it right. You get billed forty nine ninety five for a credit and you can use it on something that costs $80. Credit expires after 12 months. Or you can choose to skip a month and pay nothing. There is no limit to how many times you can skip. That's how Australian things are advertised. When I was a, <laughs> when I was a kid, that was all spokespersons were like this. You, you, you get the shirt, you get the jacket, you get to be happy, you get to go home. You wear it on the way back, you pay for the credit. Uh, get free access with your VIP membership to their new outlet um, workout app for on-demand <laughs> workouts led by top trainers. Yeah, the Fabletics give you workouts. Yep. So go to fabletics.com slash IDK. Fa- IDK, you pay for that membership, you spend it on the clothes, you get the stuff coming in. Now, I, will, I wear the Fabletics like crazy. I've got a white hoodie I wear all the time. I've got a pair of grey sweatpants that I've been rocking out. I've got a T-shirt that's going to fit me eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I wear Fabletics almost every day. Well, almost every day. Yep. Did you know? Did you know, people? Pimples, they don't happen overnight. Acne always seems to appear out of nowhere. But I can, but it can actually be weeks in the making before it shows up in your skin. From stubborn breakouts to occasional pimples, Proactive has you covered. Proactive combines general skin care paired with clinically proven acne fight ingredients to treat your skin. Find the right proactive system for you. Who here's had acne? Who here had a lot of acne as a kid? I never I really a had lot, it, but I, I get. I get one and then it will just swell and swell and swell and then it'll be really hard. Mm -hmm. Proactive has three different systems designed for your skin type, whether you have dry skin, oily skin, sensitive skin, or stubborn breakouts. Proactive has a solution for you. Get that clean skin feeling. Proactive acne treatment system have clinically been proven ingredients to clear skin and they're dermatologically tested to be gentle. Right now is a great time to try proactive for our podcast listeners you can get a special limited time offer by going to proactive.com slash idk subscribe today and you'll receive proactive's hydrating duo as a free gift that includes four hydro masks what's a hydro mask hydrogel hydrogel are they those ones that people put on to make their skin look good i think it like helps with irritation and I don't know, inflammation. It can't make things worse. (laughs) Four hydrogel masks and the green tea moisturizer. Best of all, you get free shipping. Again, visit proactive.com slash IDK and take advantage of this special offer now. That's proactive.com slash IDK and subscribe to Constantly Clear Skin. Yeah. Uh, Please welcome our guest to the show, Wayne Fetterman. G'day, thank you. G'day, Wayne. How are you? We, have, well, thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I've been told that we've met, and I don't remember. And I'm real. I feel really terrible. Mm-hmm. And not only have we met. Oh uh, God! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! We've had sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no, no sex. But uh, we are in a, a film. We're in this a film together. Oh. We're in a film together. That's your hint. That's your hint. So was it? Was it one with David Hasselhoff? As a matter of fact, it wasn't, but that's a good guess. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. If you want to be wrong. Oh, 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 is it the one um, punching the clown? No. It's no, I've only been in a few films. What okay. kind of movies have you been in? <laughs> <laughs> was it a horror movie? Yeah, give another hand. What was it? No, it's a documentary. Documentary. Oh, I've been in a lot of documentaries. So it could be the history of swearing. It could be comics. So you're a stand-up comedian? You betcha. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, it's a stand up comedian. So I, I, now I feel a lot better about this. All right. Uh, uh, so, so, okay. How do you feel better about it? Yeah. Is this especially top week stand up comedy? Uh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, here, uh, Wayne Fetterman is an American comedian, actor, author, writer, comedy historian, podcaster, and an adjunct USC professor. He uh, was a head monologue writer for NBC's Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. He co-produced the Emmy-winning HBO documentary, The Zen Diaries of Gary Shandling. And his new book, The History of Stand-Up, came out yesterday, March 15th, and is available everywhere you can buy a book. So 
Um, yeah. If you want to give us a little bit more background, Wayne, just on. Well, on also, the- I do quite a bit of uh, acting. Um, I have a recurring role on Curb Your Enthusiasm, yeah, which right. is uh, very show popular over here in the United States. You probably don't know it. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, but a, a lot. I've done, you know, Crashing and uh, Silicon Shameless. Valley. Silicon Valley. I play my, I guess my claim, my favorite, one of my favorite things I ever did, I got to play uh, Larry Sanders brother on the Larry Sanders show. I love that. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Jack's a big fan of the Larry Sanders show. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. You can't see Jack. He's in the shadows. Yeah, Jack, so Jack, Jack, Jack watches it on the regular. Like he, he oh. said to me yesterday, he goes, oh, there was an episode of Larry Shanning about it. Yeah, yeah. Every, <laughs> yeah, that was a great show. <laughs> Jack, Jack is Jim's assistant. He's in, like I said, he's on a mic. He says, he, you've met Wayne? Yeah, I know Wayne from USC. I gave him the USC comedy hat. Oh my God! I do know that guy. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your assistant. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah, he's, I'm he's sorry. A- sorry about that. <laughs> Damn, he fits in well already. He just comes in. He hot knows too much chat. about me. <laughs> he, he, why did you give him a hat for, man? Was it like just like I thought you might need this? Well, because I was I was the head of the USC comedy program, like the student yep. section. So I was giving out USC comedy hats to like professors and everybody. So he was a professor at SC for stand up. So I gave right. him. Can I say something about my professorship real quickly is that I know I, I, I throw it around, but it's actually, I'm a, something called an adjunct professor, which is adjunct basically means not a professor. That's <laughs> right, right. <laughs> He's not a mean, professor. <laughs> USA. I have to do that, I guess. Yeah. Like, did you, but did you have to study anything? Did you have to go to, no. co- co- oh, okay. So <laughs> it's an honorary thing where you just. It's not honorary. It's just, if you're an ex supposedly an expert in your field, They'll bring you in and let you teach. And all kind of adjunct professors on this podcast. This is, this, I think that I'm going to do rather badly on this subject because Probably. I know how to do stand up, but like the history of stand up and all that type of stuff, I I'm very vague on. Um, mm-hmm. There was Lenny Bruce, and he got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear in that voice. <laughs> so who was that character? Who was it? Was that a? That was my intelligent man voice. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask Jim everything he thinks he knows about stand-up comedy, and I'm going to prod him along with some questions. So for about five, ten minutes, he's going to just let us know, think, see what he knows, mm. and um, and we'll come back and revisit those answers. And then at the end of that, Wayne, you're going to grade him zero through ten, ten being the best uh, on his accuracy. All right. Yeah, whatever. Can Be I, harsh. You sure I can't do an A through F? Because that's what I'm used to. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll do an A through, through F. F. Yeah. You do A through F, and then... Uh, Kelly, you'll grade him on confidence, A through F, and okay. I'll grade him on, <laughs> I'll grade him on et cetera, A through F. And then, by the uh, way, we can do minuses and pluses. So right, it's okay. 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 there's okay. a lot of grades, a lot of grades. Okay. All right. Great. So if you get an A minus two plus R O T F L O A, whatever that, that thing is. Rolling do you get a C L O L. I think you forgot F. the M rolling no, on the floor, LOL. laughing my ass off. I don't know. Okay. You get it. Yeah. F's bad. Yeah, F's F. good. <laughs> F's good. A is yeah. good. F's bad. Yeah. Got yeah. it. All right. I'm in. All right. Well, Jim, where uh, where did stand up comedy originate? I I believe that stand up comedy is an American art form. I believe. Correct. He's already got an A. Yeah. He's got an A. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I believe. Yeah, I believe it was from America, and well, then and then um and then like England got it, and then I think uh, Australia got it. Maybe it was after 9 11, um, but Australia wow. Australia got it quite late. Mm. 9 11 was the impetus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what, the, okay. What, what was it more, most likely called at the time, like besides stand up comedy? Uh, see, see, before stand up comedy, there would have been vaudeville, which was like all the places where you got people like Abbott and Costello came from that type of a thing and the Marx Brothers and all that type of stuff. And that was more, um, you know from the silent movies to the slapstick to all that type of stuff. And then I imagine there would have been a bloke who just told a few stories up there and that would have been the first sort of introduction to it. And then they started putting these people on in between the strippers and stuff in strip clubs uh-huh. to uh, sort of keep the men all sort of happy while the, the stripper was picking up <laughs> their clothes keeps a off the floor. Nothing like, like <laughs> some comedy. Uh, what well-known author went on a comedy world tour with 22 North American shows? Hmm. Um, I would say that would be Mark Twain. 
Mark Twain would have uh, he would have rocked Ooh. around uh, going all the thing. Oh, I'm I'm when he does that thing. I'm half as happy as I was when I was happy as I am or something. You know those, <laughs> those, <laughs> Mark, those Mark Twain Ridley fucking yeah. comments that he says. <laughs> he just made a noise. Yeah. Wayne, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm loving it. He's he's actually very intuitive about the whole uh, history. You know more and than now. You I think. feel like I just wasted my time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we all feel like we're wasting our time too. <laughs> uh, the Tonight Show was a launching pad for many careers. When did that start? Um, well, it's late at night, 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depending on the time zone, yeah. that might be correct. Mountain, mountain zone, yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Um, the, the Tonight Show, I think Tonight Show in its, okay, so it, it Johnny Carson wasn't the original. Johnny Carson was the second person, but he was the most famous person. I can't remember the person who was before Johnny Carson. And so I would, mm, okay, so before that you had shows like, Ed Sutherland, who had the Beatles on all the time, he used to have Lenny Bruce on the show. And then Lenny Bruce used to do shows like he used to do the live from the Playboy Mansion where they used to have him sort of sitting in a corner and all that stuff. And I think The Tonight Show was after that. So The Beatles are on the Ed Sutherland show in 1964. I'm going to say The Tonight Show started in 1970. Mm. Not bad. I like how you don't think you know anything, yet you keep talking and saying things that make, make sense to me. I don't know. This is the idea of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> Episode 45. <laughs> it's what's called the concept. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm going to ask you like three or four more questions, then we're going to jump back the way we can jump back and forth because I think it would be good that way. Um, when did the first comedy album win a Grammy and whose was it? Uh, I'm going to say the first Grammy. Mm, okay, it might be something like Red Fox or something like that who brought out a lot of albums or it could – I'm going to go the first Grammy was George Carlin and it was the one class clown where he had like the duck's head on it. I think that had the seven words. I'm just taking a punt on that. That's just an educated guess. But there was probably something before that. Okay. Uh, Bill, Bill Cosby probably won one or something like that. <laughs> Comedy to make love by or whatever. <laughs> All these albums. Okay. What are sick necks? Um, uh, Sicknicks? Yeah. I have no idea. I'm not even going to make one up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sicknicks. That's it's, not fun. It's a guy called Nick with cancer. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch fun. of them. Yeah. <laughs> now it's, now it's fun. <laughs> a group of Nicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 1961, Lenny Bruce was arrested for what? Um, public... It, it, it was for swear. It was profanity, basically. But I, I don't know if they could have arrested him for that. So I'm going to say public disturbance because they couldn't have, because we still have the freedom of speech, so they couldn't have got him for that, but it would have been for um, something public disturbance. Okay. What was LA's first comedy club and what year did it open? Um, I'm ooh, between the comedy store and the improv. Uh, I am going to say the improv was before the comedy store. And I just feel like, because you got those, that picture of John Lennon in like the 1970s sort of standing in front of the banner and all that type of stuff. So mm -hmm. I just sort of feel like that was maybe um, ever a touch older than the comedy <clears throat> store, but I might be wrong. Okay. Let me ask you on two more. And then, then you'll say, no, it was Coke cuts on last, uh, coconuts on last year. <laughs> 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 <Probably. laughs> I'm not sure. I think I know what it is, but I think you're wrong, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so, I, might, I might be wrong. Um, uh, this comedian hosted the inaugural broadcast of NBC Saturday Night Live or, or Saturday night in 1975. Um, George Carling was the original uh, ho first host of Saturday Night Live, and he thought maybe he was going to host it forever. And then, like, oh. um, Andy Kaufman did it soon afterwards, but but uh, he wasn't the original host. All right, and who was the first comic to sell out Madison Square Garden? Um, to sell out Madison Square Garden, uh, I'm going to say it's the Dice Man. I'm nice. going to say Andrew Dice Clay sold, was the first person to sell out Madison Square Garden. I feel like other people could have done it before him, but it, it, he was the only person to bother trying to figure out if you could. Okay. No one else had Little Miss Muffet sat on a Tuffet joke. Yeah, yeah. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> uh, in 1994, which comedian held the number one TV show, the number one movie, and the number one book all at once? Uh, that was John Belushi. What, 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 what year was that? Sorry? 1994. Oh, not 1994. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Because I, I was thinking, because at one stage, SNL and uh, Animal yeah. House and all that, it was all the number one thing. So 1994. Show movie book. 
Show, movie, book. 1994 sounds an awful lot like it's going to be Jerry Seinfeld. And yeah. the, the the show was Seinfeld. The 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 um, mm. stand-up special was... No, I'm a telling movie. you for the last It's a movie, time. not a stand-up special. A movie. Oh, movie. Okay, the, the book was sign language. It was his book, Sign Language. Yeah. And the movie... Fuck, was that when he brought out that stupid B film? No, that was in uh, 94. All right. <laughs> it's like 2005. So maybe, maybe. it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't um, mm. Seinfeld. Maybe it wasn't. Movie, movie, book, TV show. Mm. No, I'm going to stick with Seinfeld. Maybe there was a movie I didn't know about. Uh, okay. There's a question, what is the feature and headline? I'm not going to ask you that. Um, I think, that, like, you know what? Let's go. Let's talk to uh, Wayne. The, the movie Comedian. Oh, yeah. Was it number one? Uh, we'll find out. All right, All right Wayne. Um, on those questions and, and anything else you want to say about stand-up comedy? You know? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all the money. How did, how, how did, Jim, uh, how did uh, Jim do? A through F. Well, out of the gate, he was phenomenal. Then it was like he pulled a hammy in the back part of the track. <laughs> and then he stumbled and then he got up and then he was running again and then he fell on his face and they crawled a little bit. Oh, no. And then he urinated and then he got up <laughs> and he kept going. <laughs> really fun to watch. <laughs> Yeah, I was running a marathon when I went, I run really fast. <laughs> and then I just keep running fast. And he collapsed at 0.5 miles. So what's his grade? Um, I'm going to give him a, I don't know, C plus. Right. I okay. think he's above, Passing. yeah, above Passing. average. Yeah, yeah. Slightly above average, I would say. C plus. Some of those things he nailed. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely nailed. I was, I was, was definitely really surprised. But you were saying that you didn't know much, but yeah. you happen to know a lot. Um, I would give you, you a B minus on confidence. Okay. Mm. Be my, be my, okay, and for et cetera, I'm going to give him an A, and I'm going to move that to the middle, and it spells cab. All right. <laughs> there you go. Great. Right. Cool. Excellent. Cab. Amp Human is a human performance company dedicated to helping athletes at all levels unlock their limitless potential. Their latest innovation, D+. Plus. Oh, yeah. Look, I got D pluses in school, and look where I fucking came out. <laughs> I did all right. I'm retiring at 46, so <laughs> if I can get on to the fucking D plus education. Oh, no, this is a lotion. Yeah. D plus lotion of its first of its kind, gel-based lotion that delivers vitamin D directly through the skin. Wow, wow, wow. With limited sunlight <laughs> during winter and more time indoors, there has never been a better time or a more important supplement than vitamin D. Just two pumps <laughs> applied to the inner <laughs> forearm contains 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 to boost immunity, improve sleep quality, and support brain function. Backed by two times clinical trials, it is proven to triple your vitamin D levels with three to four months of daily use. Well, I'm not putting any vitamin D into me, so I assume it's going to do a lot for me. I'll be a hundred times. This will be the best area to include your personal experience with the product. That's what it says there. <laughs> have you used it first? I have. Yeah, we, t we, we yeah, I put it on my forearm. Kelly puts it on her face. I did yeah, put it on my face. I've yeah, learned you're, you're not to supposed to now, but I really <laughs> yeah, did I, like it on my face. It I used it this morning. So I just, I, it's right there in my sink. Yeah, Easy. it's part of Let's my skincare go. routine. i got to get some. Yeah, have you, I got some? You have yeah, some. you do have some. I gotta start using it. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Maybe you guys look a lot more chipper than me. Yeah, yeah, it's working. Yeah, it's the D plus. <laughs> My sleep, sleeping better. You're sleeping better. Yeah, yeah. I sleep horrendously. Yeah, I need I gotta get the D plus. D. Gotta yeah. get the D, D plus. plus. There's a helicopter landing here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, it's just in, it's in the roof somewhere. Uh, Say goodbye to pills. Bye, pills. Bye. Bye, bye. bye, pills. Don't let your door hit you on your pill on the way out. <laughs> Bye! Because we have D Plus Lotion, the easiest way to do vitamin D. Visit amphuman, A M P H U M A N dot com slash IDK and use the code IDK15 to get 15% off D Plus Lotion today. Thank you, Amphuman, for sponsoring the podcast. Are you cleaning your butthole with the most state of the art technology? I am. <laughs> stop stop living like a caveman and say hello to Tushy. Hello, Tushy. <laughs> hello. Goodbye, Pills. Hello, hello, Tushy. Did you see Pills on the way out as you were coming in? <laughs> hello. The future of toileting has arrived. Okay, it's, it's technically been around for centuries, but hideously expensive, costing thousands. 
Now, brand the brand new Tushy 3.0 Modern Debate attachment is here uh, to level the playing field. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install and affordable. Hello, Tushy 3.0 doesn't just clean your butt with precise <laughs> stream oh. of fresh water. It cleans itself. Wait the fuck. After, <laughs> before and after use with a smart spray automatic self-cleaning nozzle. Nice. Like, oh, I wish I had things that cleaned themselves on me. You do. What? You have a Tushy. I do. I do have a tushy. Yeah. yeah, I have a tushy. I have a tushy. It attaches to your existing toilet. It requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper by eighty yeah. percent. You'll never buy toilet paper again. Well, you will. Or just twenty percent of the time. So, <laughs> so the hello tushy bidet pays for itself in a few months. Just in a few months, you <laughs> with your all that toilet paper, big toilet paper. Uh, well, but, I it's mean, expensive ever since. It is you know, expensive. COVID. Yeah. Is it? I, I, I don't. How much is toilet paper? It's expensive. It's yeah. Toilet paper and paper towel are like very expensive because they're like, what are you gonna do? Make it yourself? Right. Yep. Yeah. What are you gonna mm. use a fucking printer paper? Because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Just poop, spray, and go. And sanitation is simple. The schmutz shield. Hey, I got <laughs> myself the schmutz shield. Um, <laughs> The Schmutz Shield wow. offers easy cleaning and the knobs are naturally antibacterial. Microbial. Uh, say the word for me. Antimicrobial. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, every Hello Tushy Bidet <laughs> attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free and a 12-month warranty. <laughs> Already got a tush on your pot? Well... You haven't got the number three. Upgrade, <laughs> upgrade to the three. You're only getting your asshole partly clean. <laughs> if you're new to the revolution, join millions of Hello Tushy customers right now and have the clean butt with every flush. Go to hellotushy.com slash gym to get 10% off plus, plus free shipping. Now, this is a special offer for our listeners, so go to hellotushy.com slash gym for 10% off. Hellotushy.com slash gym. Um, so, uh, stand-up comedy. Where, uh, where did it originate? It uh, did start in the United. Did start in the United States, but that's kind of a trick question because no one knows exactly who the first stand-up comedian was. So, I, I give him a pass on that anyway. But that he knew that it started in the United States, definitely. I'll give him credit for that. Yeah, there, there had to be somebody though, right? That they were like that. I heard well, this guy there telling was a jokes. Guy- and- there was a guy named Artemis Ward who used to do famous, funny um, lectures. And he's the guy that Mark Twain saw, which you got that question correct, by the mm. way. Uh, the Mark Twain saw, I was like, oh, people will pay money to watch a funny lecture. And then I don't know if you know this about Mark Twain. He, uh, he lost a lot of money in a startup. Do you know about this? No. Yeah, he... He he was get kept. He felt like he was getting ripped off by the publishers for these books that were selling a lot. He's like, I think I could publish my own books and manufacture them. So he invested all this money into this printing press that, when it worked, it was the best printing press in the world. But it didn't work a lot. So he loses his shirt, and then he's like, All right, I'm going to go on tour and make a bunch of money and toured the whole world. It was insane how many countries he went to. And this is before, obviously, air travel and stuff. So a lot of people think Artemis Ward might be the first stand-up, but there isn't, like, one guy because there were funny guys in minstrel shows and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus probably dropped a few gags in. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Like, like he couldn't have gotten You don't have 12 friends without being a little funny. You can't forget those followers without putting a few. uh, Blessed are the meek. Let me tell you about the fucking meek. (laughs) (laughs) I was down the road the other day chatting to the meek. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. You, 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 like you heal a leper, you got to have a funny tale about it. And the fucking right. the fucking cunt got up and started skipping around. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Very Christ-like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what was it more more likely called at the time? Jim was saying vaudeville, and and I mean, was there a name for stand-up comedy when it first started? They, Mark Twain didn't. Oh, the first. Th- oh, the first. What was it called? Yeah, they were called monologists. They were oh, no. they're not called stand up. So like comedy monologues. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 And actually, it, 
exactly what he said is what happened. Like there was a bunch of crazy stuff happening in vaudeville and there were a lot of comedy teams. And then mm. all of a sudden, a couple of people are like, let me just come out and talk to the audience. Uh, you know, in, in one, they used to call it, which means performing by yourself in front of the curtain. And that's what became uh, comedians. When did, so they were called monologists. When did yeah. the term raconteur come in? Is that a more modern thing? <laughs> raconteur? That I, don't, that I don't know. Yeah, I'm right. an adjunct. I'm an adjunct professor. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. I didn't know. Oh, he turned the tables on me. I see <laughs> uh, we talked about Mark Twain. Okay. So the tonight show was a launching pad for many Chris, when did that start? Uh, you said 10 PM. Uh, Johnny Carson was a second house. 1970s. When you said tonight show yeah. started, is that about right? Yeah. It started in 1954. He was not the second host. Oh. This is when it started to go bad. Yeah. Um, he was the, <laughs> Third, and there was actually some other little ones in between. So, but of the main ones, it was Steve Allen started Steve it. Steve Allen. Then somebody named Jack Parr. Does that name at yeah. all mm-hmm. mean anything to you? No. And then Johnny Carson took over October 1st, 1962. Mm. Oh, 62 Where? he took over. Wow. wow. Yeah. Went 62? from 62 to 92, 30 Ooh, years. Jesus. That's Oh, yeah. I was yeah. miles out on that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time. No, yeah, no, no, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. I was six, eight years I was out and two hosts and, tw- and 30 and two decades for the show. <laughs> You're close. That's all right. I've always thought with Ed Sutherland, how did that fucker get a TV show? He seemed just like a hunchback guy that's like, really big show. And I was like, you couldn't get someone better to host than that. <laughs> the guy was hopeless. <laughs> now, the weird thing is about that show, that show started in 48 in June and it was, like the sponsor that the, back then they had sponsors for mm. shows. So like the sponsor was like, we're getting a better host. Aren't we? This is, this is not going to be the guy. Oh, really? And they hate it. But what happened is guess what? It got popular. Mm. Mm. And yeah. that's Yeah. Guess what? There aren't a ton of options of things to watch. In 1948. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's on no, TV. Like, this guy sucks, but we could watch the wall instead. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, and the Johnny Carson thing, too, I remember because they always portrayed Ed McMahon as like a drunk. But then I remember reading something where it was like Johnny was a guy that would show up with a lot yes. of drinks. And then he'd like just try and say, look at this drunk guy right here. And meanwhile, he was like hammered or something like that. And Johnny Carson gave up the booze. He was just meant to be quite a mean drunk, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he got fair. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm. Supposedly, he was not friendly when he got. By the way, when the couple times I met you. You, someone was drinking and it wasn't me between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim's a friendly drunk. Yeah. He was unbelievable. He's, he's extremely what, friendly. Bad, but knocks out his memory though. <laughs> 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 but very friendly dude. Yeah, yeah. Extremely um, friendly guy. Uh, when did the first comedy album win a Grammy and who was it? He said George Carlin class clown. Is that- well, um, George Carlin was, did win some Grammys, but, no, it was in 1959 the album came out, and it was called Inside Shelley Berman. Ooh. Have you ever heard of that guy, Shelley Berman? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. But I found a Grammy in a garage sale that had that name on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was the first That was the first stand-up to win it. And the second one was Bob Newhart. You probably know that guy, right? I, I've I've seen Bob Newhart once in one of like one of those old sort of restaurants with booths that are very dark oh, and yeah, that yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. I didn't go up to him. I was very excited. Isn't yeah. Shelley uh, Berman the the Larry David's dad? On Kirby's yes, enthusiasm? yes, yes, he was. He, he played. Oh, oh yeah, he's not. He's Larry David's dad with the glasses and all that. Those yeah, stuff. yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. it. Yeah, that's I know it. him. Okay, first Grammy. Okay, that, yeah. that was that, yeah the very first one and the first of the modern stand ups to sell out uh, to play Carnegie Hall. Like he kind of opened that as a gig for comedians. I I, I once did Carnegie Hall. Um, Tell me about it. Well, it's it's it's, it's, it's very weird because they don't let you do anything. There was one stage where I walked out there to do the sound check and all that type of stuff. And then I was like, oh, I got to, I want to move my, I always have a chair on stage. And so I'm like, I'd, I'd like to move it over there. And then they all went, don't you touch that chair. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm like, what? They go, there's people who are paid who are in the union. If you move that chair, then they don't. And I'm like, because oh. it feels like all the staff there are fucking, they've been given their jobs like they're fucking gondola drivers in fucking Venice. Like <laughs> my father worked here and everything. Like, 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 so you weren't allowed to touch anything. And then I was still, I was still like sort of smoking then and all that type of stuff. And I remember like going up to, 
the the dressing room and like trying to crack open a window. And it's like, but because I always seen that famous picture of Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin where they've all got a cigarette, they're all laughing, and it says Carnegie yeah. Hall down the bottom. Those days are over. <laughs> <laughs> no smoking. Yeah, no, there's no nothing. And it was like, can I get a can I get a beer up in my dressing room, please? And people were like ringing and checking people. And like Jeez. in the end, my management went off to a bottle shop for me to get a six pack of beers. Like it was pretty strict. It's not a. It's I'll tell you, Carnegie Hall, not a carefree place. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising. And then when you start, then when you start like with me just saying the word cunt over and over and over again, it's it felt wrong. Like the room was like, we, it, I, I felt like I shouldn't have been there. The audience felt like they shouldn't yeah. have been there. We were all like, this isn't right. We'd be, <laughs> we'd be happier at the beacon. <laughs> <laughs> but, I love it. But Here's I, a quick, quick little trivia about, um, I don't know if it's for that, the, you're, you're talking about the crazy level of union mm. for the stagehands yeah, in New yeah. York. Yeah. But I know that the Broadway stagehands, their local, their union local number is one. Right. That's, correct. Wow. That's how old and powerful they are. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. local one. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. a little... Uh, yeah, that's. I, I, I remember at some theater, the guy wouldn't bring the microphone. The, our microphone cord was broken. And he was telling... Um, Lisa to bring it out. And then I was like, I think that's illegal. You touch that cord. It was in New York City. I think if you touch that cord, like some shit will happen. And then Oh no, no, no. I went to move the chair. It was a it was a that's fucking hilarious. it was it was a thing, man. It was a thing. It, it's funny that we're doing this episode because Jim d- does not know the topic. And at the very beginning, he talked about um stopping stand-up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm planning on stopping stand-up in two no. years. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, wait, just, wait, wait, wait. Are you planning on stopping stand-up comedy? Yeah. Or you're quitting. Yeah, he's he's taking on the I'm industry. Ta- I'm, 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 t- I'm taking you all with me. No more jokes. <laughs> I'm gonna write an expose book full of lies and shit. He is literally stopping. <laughs> I've had enough. Okay, let's. Um, That's hilarious. What are sick nicks? No idea. Sick nicks. A group of nicks. Well, so, yeah. This is this was partially a takedown of Lenny Bruce and Shelley Berman and those guys from the 1959. There was an article in Time magazine and it called their brand of humor sick humor. So they called them the sick Nicks, as in the beat Nicks or yeah. something like that. And it was a very controversial article, especially now looking back because it's like. You had no idea what was about to come down yeah. the pike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be a guy at Carnegie Hall yelling, Cunt. <laughs> He's trying to move a chair. <laughs> fucking asshole. This fucking piece of shit is going to be yelling, Cunt. Yeah, I'm, a, no I, idea I'm, a, I'm a sick nick. <laughs> uh, I get a different word for you now. But uh, yeah. So in 1961, Lenny Bruce was arrested for Jim said profanity, public disturbance. Is that? Was, well, he what he would in a weird way, you're correct because he's like he was it was for obscenity on stage, and he said the I'm allowed to say the word, I'm gonna say oh, cocksucker. Yeah. Cocksucker yeah. was the word that got him arrested. Louise, in, can you bleep that, please? We don't like profanity. <laughs> on I was like, yeah, I was, that's fine, but cocksucker. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what word he's about to say. <laughs> oh, cocksucker, that's fine. <laughs> So, uh, please don't say the N word. Please do not say the N word. <laughs> uh, so, no, back then yeah. that word was fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that was just fine. That was fine. Yeah. Yeah. You get a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the crazy thing that was in San Francisco, which is like that was kind of the point of it. Like there's a lot of that going on around here. And so, so we, so that's, that was his first arrest for, uh, and it was for obscenity on stage. And then he, here's the crazy thing he kept getting arrested in like, the most liberal progressive cities, Chicago, L.A., and New York were the other three cities he got arrested in wow. for and, using profanity. And they started to get the IDs. I know this little story. They started to get the IDs of people who were in the audience to see who was seeing this horrendous stand-up. And one of them was a very young George Carlin. And George Carlin actually went in the police wagon with him. Yeah. I think there's a photo of it. Yeah, he got arrested yeah. and taken away with So Lenny they were doing Bruce. like comedy contact tracing? Like who has been exposed to <laughs> cocksucker language? Yeah, that's basically that's what they were doing. They how were... do we not have contract tracing now? But we did that. Yeah, you can't figure out with a virus. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, so he's <laughs> absolutely right. That happened in Chicago. That's exactly what happened. Wow. Harlan was at a show. He got arrested at. 
It's uh, so the, we're, we're the cops. But isn't that weird that someone yeah. could get arrested on? I'm talking about. Yeah. No one complained. No one compl- No one went like, "What's going on in here?" We. It was like they just an adult establishment where people paid to get to yeah. buy a ticket, get in there. They were like, "Nah, I'm sorry, you can't do this." Well, that's yeah. what they were going to do to Jim in China. We, they for him to perform in like Beijing. What? Oh, they yeah, have to yeah. send like the entire set written to them. And, I canceled. The, I canceled the show in China. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. I, I knew. I knew I wouldn't make their requirement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was the, third, the second joke in. You're like, uh, is there any way? <laughs> I was. I was done in. I was done in. Uh, I, I in Dubai. I was in trouble. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I, I was told that uh, don't mention any of the shakes or something like that. I think I just mentioned the outfit. I wasn't like uh, it yeah. wasn't anything. I didn't say. You know, and they stopped the show. I was in a bit of trouble. People yeah. came and we had to talk our way out of it. it yeah, was, I remember in Thailand they were like, "Do not make fun of the king." Yeah, t- Thailand, of- don't don't mention the prince, the king, or the, <laughs> yeah. the king. Yeah, they fucking, <laughs> you'll be in trouble. Yeah. And now, don't say anything about Meghan Markle. It's happening all <laughs> over the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The, the the thing with the, the being arrested, though, it's like, I guess the cops were just standing in the back of the club. That's what it was. Lenny Bruce was performing. They're like, well, we're just going to go to this club. I mean, how would they know? Okay. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, I, that first one is the weirdest because is, you know, it's in like the, where free the free speech movement starts in the United States. It's like right there. So and here's the crazy thing. When do we, he gets arrested down here in Los Angeles, they had a. Jewish cop go down there to translate the Yiddish words that he would say because he would say schmuck and things like that. Mm. Like, oh, that means penis. <laughs> it was, I know, I know it sounds absurd. It sounds absurd, but after all, he was a sick Nick, so we had to take care of him. We had we had this happen in Australia in it was uh-huh. much less of a small thing in the 1980s, the early 1980s. We had a comedian called Rodney Rude. And every mm-hmm. time he went up to Queensland, he'd get arrested or something for obscenity or something. Oh, yeah, Jeez. I remember you played some of that guy for me. Yeah, Rodney Rude. Rodney Rude, he's, he's, he's very offensive. <laughs> if you listen, it's, there's a lot of... Rodney Rude. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of offensive jokes. In but then he used to just go out there and go, all right, I've written a song for you all, I've written a song for you, Queensland cops. They get the prostitutes to gobble their knobs and then have, the, <laughs> have all the cops standing at the back. <laughs> and as a kid, we thought it was fucking gold. You get a Ronnie Root album and you listen to it. And it was, you know, it was super racist and super whatever. Yeah. But we thought it was we thought it was excellent when we were kids. <laughs> Perfect for I the gotta kids. Check that guy out. Yeah, yeah. Um is there a lawnmower going on? It's yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. There's someone blowing leaves out the front of our <laughs> studio. <laughs> Uh, what was LA's first comedy club? What year did it open? You said the improv might be a touch older than the comedy store. Might be. Yeah. No, that was an interesting guess, but you, it's the comedy store opened in 72. The improv didn't open till like 75, yeah. but the picture of John Lennon is from the improv in New York city. Oh. That was, that was where you. I always thought it was the Ice House was older because, but it's not technically LA, right? It's not LA. No, it is LA, but it's I. That's more of a music club that used comedians. This was strictly comedy clubs who were like, "Oh, we're gonna have eight yeah. comedians on or nine comedians on a Thursday night. Yeah. We're gonna do two shows on Friday." Like, yeah, I, but yes, I, definitely. There was a lot of lot of like rooms that used comedians before the comedy store. I used to play the comedy store in London a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And it's owned by a guy called Don Ward. And Don Ward, I think, for a lot of my career, he got me into Montreal. He was the first comedy club in England to book me. And he really backed me when I, when I first started out. And so I have a lot of love for this man. And, um, and Don, I think the story goes, Don came out here on holiday uh, and he saw the comedy store and he just came back. The, 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 the name wasn't licensed in London. And he went, all right, fine. Just, it's, they're not affiliated, the comedy store London. The comedy, the comedy store London's as popular as the comedy store here. You know? Oh, yeah? Yeah. And so he came back. Now, before that, Don used to own strip clubs. Mm. Now, he, he, he nicked basically the, uh, the name for the comedy store, but he also came back with the first pole in Britain, the first uh, stripper pole. Before what? before that, they didn't have poles, right? They, he'd seen it in L.A. at the body shop or wherever he went to, 
They yeah. didn't have them. They used to just dance on stage and da 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 da. But they didn't spin around a pole. This was a foreign idea. You yeah. can't think back in time before <laughs> poles. You can't. Yeah. It doesn't even doesn't even seem real, does it? Uh. Anyway, anyway, he goes. So I bought this. He goes. So I bought this stripper pole. I got, I got it and I brought it all the way back to me, back with me. This is in the 70s. He brought it all the way back to uh, to England and he goes, I put it up on the show, on the, on the stage, and he goes, and all the strippers looked at me like I was fucking mental. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he goes, you had to sort of, he goes, I had to show him. Because <laughs> he goes, you, you sort of grind up against it and you spin oh, around. <laughs> I like that. It, that. Usually we're stealing stuff from England. He just came over here and stole everything. I think he just came on holiday and said, oh, this is good, that's good. You know, it's the yeah. same as food or whatever. There's, yeah. there's yeah. a comedy store in Australia too, but that's the same the thing. The comedy right? store in Australia has got nothing to do. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they only registered the name within the country. Maybe you're only allowed to do that, not a worldwide brand or something like that. But yeah, the comedy, sure store in a, a comedy store in Australia isn't affiliated with either of them either. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, here's a question I didn't ask you. How old was Freddie Prinze when he made his debut on The Tonight Show? I'm going to say 17. Mm. It's pretty close. It's 19. 19 I will yeah. give him credit for that. Yeah. Oh. He might have just moved up to a B plus. Mm. But he's he, still wrong by three years. Yeah, two that's years. two years. No, that's, <laughs> and, I'd love to I'll give him credit for that. But, uh, and, and I'm also good friends with his son. Yeah. Like I should You hang out with him like every week. I hang out. You do? I was, yeah. I was over at Freddie's house on Monday. <laughs> Um, so 19, Jim, remember that. 19, yeah. I can remember that when I dropped that in conversation. I'll do that with Freddie next time. So he was 19 when he was on the <laughs> – um, but yeah, I know he died very young. So I, the only reason I said 17 is because how did he have such a big career in just that short amount of time? Mm -hmm. He was like on that TV show that like propelled him Chico into – Chico and the Man. Yeah, yeah. Chico and the fame. Man, but he also had residencies and I mean, big the things. Mo the and most insane story I heard is when he tried to kill John Travolta. Tried to kill John Travolta. I mean, that was <laughs> – an unreal story. <laughs> but it's like, how do you get that all done in two years? I don't, you know? Sorry. Yeah. When you're young, you have a lot of energy. That's the thing. Oh, man, I'm slow with my career. Yeah. I was always <laughs> I was always like this in my career. As long as I do one festival or one TV spot a year, then that year's <laughs> been successful. And then there's like, if I did like a spot on a late night show or something like that, then I took my foot off the pedal. Ah, that's this year like, done. Count it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm less motivated than my success. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I get that. Um, this comedian hosted the inaugural bo uh, broadcast of NBC Saturday Night in 1975. He said George Carlin. I think. Of course. You nailed that. Yeah. yeah. Nailed it. I didn't know that at all. That's so that so when when did George Carlin become because he was a radio guy, right? And then when did he get I mean, if he's hosting Saturday Night Live then at that point, when did he like what year did he become famous, I would say, as well, he's had like, a, I'm, and I'm working on a documentary right now about his life. And this is what he had, like, he sort of had a convert, uh, a change in the middle of his career. So he started out, he was famous in the sixties. I mean, he was, he was on all those talk shows. He was doing, you know, on variety shows. And then uh, he started doing uh, LSD and he realized, oh, I'm entertaining the parents of the people I want to be entertaining. So that's when he grew his hair out. Like I remember uh, Jim said something about uh, Class Clown, like he had all of those albums came out. And then all of a sudden, that's when that's when he was hosting SNL mm -hmm. during his hippie, hippie era. Yeah. I want to entertain really, really old people, like people like in their <laughs> no, 90s yeah. and shit. I want to actually say I've killed. <laughs> you gotta start taking cholesterol medication but you certainly have had somebody in your audience like have a heart attack or I've, had, I've had some heart attacks i've yeah, had a yeah, couple of heart attacks i've had um i've had an epileptic fit ugh. i've had a couple of those but they're like i one time look i was on stage and there was a bloke like i was i was like I was at the Edinburgh <laughs> Festival, so you have to do like one hour and you have to be mm -hmm. out of the room after the hour because the next comic comes in for their hour and all that type yeah. of stuff, right? And so so I'm on stage and every time I did a joke, all I hear in, in the darkness of the audience is, <laughs> and I was like, what? And then I finish the thing and I was like, <laughs> and I thought maybe it was a, 
uh, challenged, disabled, challenged yeah. person. And I said, is everything okay over there like that? And then uh, his mate just went, there's something wrong with him. It's like, it turned out that this guy was having his first epileptic fit. He'd never had one. He was 50. First mm. time he ever had it. He started fitting and convulsing and all that type of stuff. And that was just at starting. And so they had to, the, the, the funny bit's coming. So, so they, had to, they had to carry him out of the room and carry him into uh-huh. the car park. And then I'm like, do I still keep making jokes? I had like, I had like fucking 30 minutes left. I got to continue with the show somehow, you know what I mean? So I continue on with the show. The guy had gone off, got in the ambulance. Then his mate walks back in. <laughs> well, he paid good money for this his, show. His mate didn't go to the hospital with him. <laughs> what? He came in to watch the end of the set. Hospitals yeah. are boring. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah. Um, as, as for, sc- that guy's dead. As for, no, I'm just saying the scariest part of that story is his first epileptic fit at 50. Yeah. You know, that's, what, that's what scared the fuck out of me as well. I'm yeah. like, oh, something else to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to Jim Jeffries shows and you'll be fine. Good thing you'll right. be retired already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, if, that, if that guy's listening, I hope you're okay, mate. I hope you don't have him all the time. But, yeah, that was – that was, and then I have, I've had the heart attacks, yeah, where people, some people killed over. Wait, somebody died at a show you were at, Wayne? Or, or heart um, I, I was actually – had gone on, but Kevin Nealon went on after me, and the guy had a heart attack during his set. He was doing better than I was. <laughs> the, the, the guy was Are like you slightly this. jealous? The guy was like this. Hang on. This. <laughs> That's the bloke from the Chippendale sketch. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, I've never, no one's ever, yeah, I guess I'm not a good comic. Oh, <laughs> there'll be a heart attack at one of your shows it'll be you <laughs> oh yeah what's the name of that comedian that died on stage oh um Tommy do, Cooper do you know that one you know oh, that? yes of yeah, course you've seen of course. that yeah, Tommy Cooper died on stage and they thought it was still part of the show and they keep laughing oh, you can watch yeah. you can watch it online it was the I royal it that. was the royal gala performance and he sort of it's terrible and he, 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 he plays a sort of shitty magician with his thing very funny Tommy Cooper I, I think Monty Python said that he was the funniest person that ever lived mm. Right. Well, a member of Money Python said so they didn't all say it. In, <laughs> and you, they didn't all say it in unison. If I may, do you know Albert Brooks? You know the I know that, of course, yeah, I know Albert Brooks. Yeah, too. his dad was a comedian hmm. back in. Uh, he was a dialect comedian. Would play like this uh, Greek character, but then became like a stand-up. He was at a Friars Club club roast for Lucille Ball. He did his set, sat down, slumped over, dead. Yeah, with the with the applause still ringing. In his ear. Wow. That's why I want to stop doing stand-up comedy. I don't. I don't <laughs> that's not what I want. Is it, wait, that's kind of a good way to go out. Like you go on stage, do know. really well, and then die during the applause break. Nah, <laughs> the applause. Then you shit yourself in front of everybody, and whatever else happens. Yeah, yeah. and then though. also people want refunds. And- <laughs> <laughs> I think Bob Einstein. Bob Einstein is Albert Brooks's brother, so that was Bob Einstein's dad. Yeah. He was saying like, "Oh, your dad mm-hmm. died doing what he loved." He's like, "No, he didn't." <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes on a tirade like he didn't die doing what he loved. You're gonna tell your wife or whatever, oh, she died doing what she loved doing laundry. No, fuck you. He's fucking dead in front of all these people. Uh, wow, Jack really brought the mood down. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a funny rant no. from him. I don't quite remember what he said. <laughs> a fun time here. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want I want to die a, a slow, painful death <laughs> uh, where people come to visit me and stuff. Yeah. Uh, he, who was the first comic to sell at Madison Square Garden? Andrew Dice Clay, Jim said. Is that correct? 100% correct. 1990. Uh, oh, shit. 100% correct. I was shocked that you I got think that I one. did better than a fucking C plus. I'll tell you that for nothing. Uh, yeah, B minus. <laughs> I know. You're, B, you're, you're a B minus now. B minus. Yeah. 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 That was awesome. awesome. That was, yeah. 1990. Now you're, now you're just a bab. Probably a Steve Martin one. could have done it before then, but yeah. never played it. Yeah. And he did it. Andrew Dice Clay did it multiple times in a row, right? Was- he did. He sold out two nights in a row there yeah. in nineteen of February, nineteen of I I sold out the smaller room, which is like I don't know four thousand oh, yeah. four thousand seats or the something like theater. that. Yeah, Billy Joel was in the next room. Yeah, Billy Joel was <laughs> Billy Billy Joel was in the other room, right? It's just and, the and, overflow and, crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get into Billy Joel. Yeah, yeah. There was, the, over here. there was one bloke just yelling the whole time, do the piano, man. <laughs> um and we actually finished our gig because we started early. We finished our gig in time to see Billy Joel's encore, which is all you need to see of Billy Joel. Yeah. He does uh, Uptown Girl, he does Piano Man, <laughs> you go home. You, you've seen the whole thing, right? Um, but, uh, but I remember like people going, I go, oh, I just sold that Madison square garden, small room. 
And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but people were really like disappointed, like, oh, you only did. It was maybe 5,000. It was a big yeah, ass it's fucking still a big, room. Yeah. It's massive. But I remember, like, that was another point in my career where I was like, Madison Square Garden. And they had a fucking bowl of cheese puffs in a, in a, in a, in a, pa- a paper bowl. That was my ride. I was a bowl of cheese puffs and a fucking beer was sitting there. And I was like, yeah, you're right, Sinatra. I made it here. I can make it anyway. <laughs> Again, just overflow snacks yeah. from Billy Joel's screen room. Yep. Um, and then since then, some people have sold out Madison Square Garden, right? Dan Cook did it. Right? But the gig that we did at Madison yeah. Square Garden, uh, what's his name? Perry from Aerosmith. Uh, Steve, Steve Perry? Perry? St- no, um, is it Steve Perry? Steve well, Perry. There's Joe Perry, but no. he's not an Aerosmith, so Steve Perry. Yeah, it- Joe Perry is the guitar player from uh, Aerosmith. Joe, Joe Perry, uh, yeah. Who's Steve Perry? Are you uh, saying yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe Perry came on and played guitar. This all uh-huh. is coming back together. He came on and played guitar with Billy Joel, and then we were walking down the hallway yeah. going, look, now let's go to Billy Joel's encore. Joe Perry had like a heart attack or something, and wow. the ambulance showed up and stretched him out past us, and we were like, "Oh, some fan." We didn't know it was him. <laughs> oh, and no. then, the, and then the so, next day, it was on the news that Joe Perry had this heart attack at the Billy Joel gig, and that was uh, that's how. So he Joe, died, Joe Perry. No, he lived through it. Oh, he he might have been something else. He might have had a stroke, but he had something where the ambulance had to fucking come. Right? Mm. He might have just fainted. Who fucking knows? Right? But it was like a news thing that that happened in the same thing. And we walked right past the stretcher. You should just tell the story that he had a heart attack at your show. We walked, we, <laughs> we walked past the stretcher like, uptown girl. <laughs> uh, in 1994, which comedian held the number one TV show, number one movie, and number one book all at once? Jerry Seinfeld was Jim's answer. No, no, because he didn't have a number one movie at that time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's actually Tim Allen. Tim uh, Allen. Makes sense. <laughs> he had this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had the Santa Claus. Do you remember yeah, that yeah, movie? Yeah. Santa Claus yeah, Home Improvement. Recently, yeah. And was he yeah, special? Home Improvement in that book. I don't know the name of it. His book was uh, How to Traffic Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, does, uh, how, does, uh, how does sell cocaine and still be on Disney? <laughs> Wow, yeah. I was trying, you know what? I, I was pretty sure it wasn't Seinfeld, but I couldn't think of who it was. I was like, oh, Tim Allen. So, yeah. Yeah. Seinfeld wasn't a bad guess, but it wasn't yeah. a good guess because it was the wrong No, answer. it was. It <laughs> definitely could have gotten, yeah, for sure, number one show. Here's one question I didn't ask you. Which comic started their podcast in 2009? That's way back when. Uh, Mark Marin. Yeah. Good job. I think that's right. Nice job. Yep. Jeez, yeah. you're going, you're already in the B's. Should have yeah, asked yeah, you that yeah, when you were yeah. going to better yeah, grade yeah. and stuff. Thank yeah. You. Why do, why are you, yeah. Yeah. Mark Marin did that. Yeah. Yeah. He's still going. Still going, still trucking, still one of the top 20 podcasts, right? Oh, I definitely, yeah. definitely. I might, think might be higher, top 10. Yeah, I would think so. Um, this is a list. Did you put this here, Kelly? The yeah. world's highest paid I was just going to see if maybe he, how this many This in 2019. Guess. I don't know if it's been, I guess 2020 yeah, wasn't so that's why good. I picked 2019. <laughs> I was one of the top paid comedians right, in 2020. Right, I, can, I can get top, <laughs> top paid comedian. Jerry Seinfeld, number 2019, one. 2019, number one, not Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Jerry Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, number three, uh, Dave Chappelle. No, he's uh, not even in the top he's ten. He's not in top ten. He yeah. should be. He had a really big deal with the old Netflix. Yeah. Uh, Chris Rock. Now your manager would be happy about this one. Oh, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, Jim, yeah. that's cute. Yeah, because that's funny. Because my manager manages me and Jim Gaffigan, and, <laughs> and, and I, 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 I know that he goes into the office like this. Uh, Jim's on the phone, and he's like, "Which Jim?" <laughs> Jeffries. Uh. <laughs> You're like the redheaded step, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is ironic next to Jim Gaffigan. Um, uh, Jim Gaffigan. Uh, have you guys done shows together? Like, have you, like, that might be a fun night. Uh, <laughs> like a crossbreed of yeah, your yeah. two fan bases. Yeah, yeah, we could, yeah, we, we could do that. We're both called Pop Tarts. The Jims? Pop Tarts and Cox. Docking Pop Tarts. Hot pockets and cunts. <laughs> Pocket cunts. <laughs> the gym show. <laughs> yeah, gym show's more wholesome. Um, uh, this next person also had a show on Comedy Central that a lot more people watched than ours. 
Oh, Trevor Noah? Yeah. yeah. Trevor Noah? Yeah. Trevor Noah. Very good. This, this next guy was with you. We were seeing Elton John, and he was coming to see you to play the venue at where Elton John. Uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is all your whole life right here. Where it's like, <laughs> this, this guy per, This, this person, guy you're, one, you. you're one of his top three favorite yeah, comedians. Number six. Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> yeah, these are all, all your friends. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, number seven. Now you're friends with her. This is so wait, it's a woman. Wait, our first it's woman on the list. Sarah Silverman. No. Yeah. I'm friends with her? Yeah. Well, you, you know her. You're friends with her. She's, I, she's a fan of yours. I get along with her, Blonde. Right? Yeah. Blonde. Uh, Nikki Glaser? Oh, the, nah, the one who's Glazier, in movies and makes a lot of money. Oh, Schumer, Schumer, yeah. Schumer. Okay, and then number eight. This one, you, you always do this the- theater. <laughs> you do his theater in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I do his theater in Las Vegas. Oh, with Terry Fader? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This guy's wow, got- and then this guy might be upset that Terry Fader's number eight and he's number nine. <laughs> oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dunham. Yeah. Dunham. Yeah. Yep. And then Aziz is number uh, 10. I, I, I reckon I, I lock in at about 42 or something. We'll make these lists longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing there's two uh, ventriloquists on that list. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, I, I have a thing for ventriloquists. I like them. I like them. What's not to like? I I worked Probably with the puppets. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with a ventriloquist a long time ago in in Florida, and he when when you're a ventriloquist and you're not on the highest earning list, like it can be kind of sad because he's his ventriloquist and his truck were both held together with like duct tape, and uh, you could see the duct tape, and then it was just it just was like a sad act, and it was like it wasn't like oh, upbeat. Where, you got to be upbeat when you're a ventriloquist. Where, where you can't have be like down unless you're um. What was this, Otto and George, when that's like your yeah, shtick, yeah. when you're like this kind of well, dirty. Cool. That, yeah. It's kind of like being a magician. It's not cool unless you're very famous. Like most most people no, don't ma- admit magician, to being into yeah, magic. Yeah. You go to the Magic Castle and see what they've booked in that room that has 150 people and they brought their props along and they're with their wife as their assistant yeah. and their wife is like 60, they're 60 and she probably was super hot in a day as the assistant <laughs> and she thought he was going somewhere and they met on a cruise ship when he she was a dancer <laughs> and he was like doing fucking close hand magic. And it's like, oh my god! And yeah. the props are like tattered. I always skip those shows. I only do the close-up magic shows. The the big illusion shows are terrible. The big illusion show. There's, oh, there's there's sweat stains on the tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's sad. It's the the magic sad. gets very sad. Yeah, the magic can get very sad. But if it's good, the close-up magic, man. Yeah, close-up magic. Oh, it's phenomenal. ridiculous. Magic yeah. Castle is like my favorite L- place in the world. Blows my mind. Yeah. And I see. I always see a magic show in Vegas. I always go see a magic show. I I do my my weekend, and then I. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh, I saw Shin Lin was mm-hmm. one of the last ones. Shin Lin, he's unbelievable. Yeah, right? unbelievable. Shin Lin, Blue Man Group. Blue Man Group. I don't like. We don't like. Is that magic? We don't. We don't like the Blue Man Group. Oh, God. My son fell asleep in the Blue Man Group. He was covered in streamers and all this type of stuff, and they were blowing cannons, and he passed out. <laughs> my brother was reading a Stephen Hawking book at a. Guns N' Roses concert <laughs> in Vegas. But now isn't he like a scientist though? So I guess yeah, it was he, probably a, he just good. got a million dollars for a startup, so he's fine. Perfect. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Wayne, you have you also have a podcast, The History of Stand Up Two. Is that still going, or is that? Yes. Yeah. 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 Not uh, not in the top twenty either. Not in the top twenty. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't mean people shouldn't listen to it. So so between the podcast and then the new book is called um, The History of Stand Up from Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. And that is out now, so you should buy that. Is there other like? Well, we have this we segment. Let's do this segment: party. the dinner party facts. Where From um, Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's in the title yeah, of the book. A, yeah. A good name. Yeah. yeah, you're uh, in the book. You're in the book, Jim. Am I? Yeah. Of oh, course. good. Oh, you got to buy the book. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. Is, are, are you nice about? That? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a whole cunt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a special good alphabetically, outs. unfortunately, <laughs> so you're not at the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have this, this uh, a segment of our show called Dinner Party Facts, where like our guest gives our listeners, viewers, like some sort of interesting or obscure fact that they can, or it can be multiple ones too, if you have more than one. Um, to to you know impress people if the subject ever comes up at some sort of function or something. So do you have anything for us for that? Me? Yeah. Yes, I do. But this is very tricky, so I'm going to do my best. I hope <laughs> I don't get us all canceled. But this is something <laughs> I just learned. This is just something I learned. This is I learned it during Black History Month, which was last month. Mm-hmm. And that is of the 12 million 
slaves that were brought out of Africa and brought to the new world. I can already tell you're, this is going to be very, <laughs> very, right, very this funny. This is just a fact. It's just a fact. Guys. Is Mark Twain coming back into this? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, uh, how many came to the United States of the 12 million? Wait, does well, this have to do with comedy? No, it's just no, something, it's just no, something uh, he's passionate uh, about. <laughs> out, of the, out of the 12 million slaves, I'm going to say Three million? Is that yeah. is everyone else going to guess? Uh, I thought this was like a all twelve million. All twelve? Well, no, I some are, some well, of, it's like Price is Right. You some guess of like, them went to Holland. Uh, some okay, of them went to okay. Britain. Some right, of them went six. to. I'm gonna go six million or six. Six, six million. million. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go six. Three hundred and eighty thousand. Mm. Well, wow. so you. What? I don't know if you know what to do with that fact. But I, 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 I really thought it was going to be like half of them. I thought it was going to be half and the rest went to like Brazil or something like that. Okay. Well, the dinner I, party facts, we usually keep it on the same topic. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. <laughs> sorry. I, I was so intrigued though. I was like, how is this going to relate to commerce? Anyway. By, by, by the way, this is why I don't get invited to dinner. Right. <laughs> and out of those 390,000, there was four stand-up comedians. <laughs> <laughs> Something from your book. I'll give you a crazy stand-up comedy fact, all right? <laughs> wow. In 1978, when uh, David Letterman did his first set on The Tonight Show, he was guest hosting the show a little over two months later. Oh, really? It's pretty crazy. It's yeah. pretty crazy. So wait, so he did, he did the set and then... He liked him so much. He was like, come back and host. That's- well, Carson, yeah. Well, I don't forget. I mean, Carson loved Letterman because they were both like Midwest comedians. Mm-hmm. Like they're both ones from Indiana. He's from Nebraska. Carson. So it was like he just loved him right out of the gate. And that was like and- the same thing with Letterman and Gaffigan. You're just talking about because he like Letterman was a huge fan of Gaffigan. Same thing like Midwest, Indiana. I know that he had him on the show. A lot yes. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do think he I mean, he liked it a lot. I mean, you know, yeah, he yeah, of course. Did, did Carson ever have any stand up specials like uh, records nope. or anything? Nope. Hmm. No, nope. I mean, they did. They put out an album of just like audio tracks off the I, I'm, first of all, I'm shaking that I made that mistake with the dinner party thing. Oh, no. <laughs> so, that's, honestly, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down in history as the best one we've ever had. No, 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 we're, I literally thought it had nothing to do with the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm an idiot. Okay. Um, Give us another one. Give us another one from the book. <laughs> no, no, no. That's all the blank history stuff I'm doing. No, no. I meant another one from the book. Hey. I started laughing book. so hard. He's like, so I learned this during Black History Month. I'm like, where are we going with this? You, you got anything on the Holocaust? <laughs> if a train okay, is leaving, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. Uh, if a train is leaving Auschwitz, <laughs> 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 yeah. So then, no, that that's my that's my fact. That, okay, uh, no, great. that is very that, impressive. That, that is very impressive. That's okay. the one uh, that everyone will remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the book is called The History. <laughs> Of stand up. Literally, okay, just so you know, as this was pitched to me, this was pitched like we're having a dinner conversation after the yeah, podcast. Yeah. We're all going to have fun facts. And that's, that's fun. how it was thought. Was yeah. that what your fun know, fact? Okay. I, 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 guess we, I guess we could have made it more clear on the call yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the uh, the 380,000. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to you at dinner. This is a lovely meal. Uh, yeah, February's just passed. Oh no, what did you learn this yeah. time? <laughs> Uh, hey Leroy, you might like this. <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, oh, fuck. Can you pass the uh, potatoes, please? I have an incredible story. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, uh, the worst. The worst. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess the, the book is called "The History of Stand Up." It came out yesterday. Uh, it's available everywhere. I'm assuming, right? I keep saying that, but it's um. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah from Mark yeah. Twain to Dave Chappelle. I came uh, out yesterday. Well, it came out yesterday when this podcast comes up. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah which yeah. is in like four days. So yeah. March 15th. Yeah. March 15th. So. Um, 
And uh, yeah, and if you like comedy, which I'm assuming you do because you listen to this podcast, um, uh, buy the book and you can learn even more than the stuff we talked about today. And where do we find you on social media, Wayne? Just um, at Fetterman on Twitter. It's kind of perfect. F-E-D-E-R-M-A-N. That's yep. Fetterman. So, yep. um, and uh, the podcast, I should stand up, listen to that. And then... Uh, any closing thoughts, Jim, or anything else you want to say? No, or? just thank you for being on the podcast. I I, I learned a lot about uh, black history. <laughs> 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 I'm looking forward to reading the book, man. I actually actually want to learn some stuff because I I, I, I I was very fearful. Of, I knew this podcast was going to happen one day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, God. The only one that, I, the only one that I'm more fearful of, of uh, than, than this podcast is um, – uh, Australian history. Oh, the topic. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, the only topic. When you guys do Australian history and I have to go, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you'll, I think you'll know more than you think. So, um, all right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Wayne. That was oh, awesome. Oh, my God. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, sorry I ruined the party. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you ever had a party and someone comes up to you? And they go, <laughs> they go. The, the late night shows, they all started in the 70s. Go, well, I don't know about that. And then walk away. Thank you very much. Good night, Australia. Bye-bye.